Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Fedora Linux 35, but this is not the default GNOME version. This is the special KDE variant. Now, right off the bat, you can see install to hard drive. Yes, it is a live environment. Yes, this is inside a virtual machine. I couldn't get it to work. I tried two to three times to install Fedora on my virtual machine, but it just didn't work. So, but we're not here to complain about what didn't go right. We're here to check out some of the new features. So first up, we're going to go into the terminal and it's called console in KDE Plasma. And we're gonna go ahead and do uname A. So we are running, we are running the 5.14 kernel. So if you're using an AMD GPU or an Intel GPU, this is going to provide you with the latest MESA drivers for gaming, so that's good. Let's close it. I'm not going to check HTOP because this is a virtual machine and a live environment, so really no point in doing that. Let's go ahead. Now we're going to click the Start menu. And as you can see, this is quite different from your default GNOME if you're new to KDE Plasma Desktop. This is a more traditional Windows-like approach where you have the Show Desktop button on the right, you have your time, and if you click on it, you have your calendar. You even have a tiny plus icon to show you your extra things. So you have your notifications, reminders, clipboard, which is super handy, night color control, lock key status, KDE Connect. KDE Connect is a very, very good application. I use it every day with my Pop OS. It just flies. You have your notifications synced. You could transfer files over the internet, over, I mean, over the network. You could transfer your clipboard data. It's fantastic. You got your battery and brightness, virtual keyboard configuration, well, it's not configured, and to create encrypted vaults. All right, here's your volume. This is your one single panel at the bottom, very Windows-like. This is your system settings. Discover the software center, your file manager, Firefox. We're going to go into all of those in a little bit, but first let's click on the start menu. As you can see, it's kind of like Windows. You have your favorites, you have all applications, and then you have your applications beautifully categorized under administration, development, education, games, graphics, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead into about. So this is system information. All right, so as you can see, we are running the KDE Plasma version 5.22.5. This is not the latest. If you want the latest, you could use something like KDE Neon, but this is a stable version and you will not find anything wrong with it. It's cool. And by default, we are using Wayland instead of X11. Now, if you're someone who uses something like Kden Live and um, you're more into video production or you know, you just want to have a hassle-free computing experience, I would recommend you to log in using an X11 session. If you don't know what Wayland and X11 is, basically those are display servers and one is the traditional and another one is upcoming new. It's better, but it's not there yet. So you use X11 so that everything on your desktop environment work perfectly. Apart from that, under basic information, we have memory. So I assigned six gigabytes to this. So that's there. Inside energy, you have your energy consumption statistics. It's empty for some reason, maybe because it's a live environment. Under detailed information, you have your devices. You can see your PCI lanes, USB, your internet devices, your ports, your graphics cards. So as you can see, we're using Wayland and we also have X server so you can switch between the two. X server as in X11. All right, so now let's take a deep dive into the system settings again. I don't know why I clicked out of that, but yeah. So this is your default system settings for Plasma. It's very detailed. You have a lot of customizability inside these settings. And basically, it's very powerful. But if you're a new user, you could be intimidated just a little bit. Don't worry. Take it easy. Step by step, we're going to learn about it. So first up is appearance. As you can see, if you hover over it, it's going to show you 
the stuff that it contains. So that's easy for you to understand before you even click. You get it. You, you know what you're going to expect. So inside here, you could change your animation speed. You could change from light theme to dark theme. Let's switch over and click on apply. Yeah, dark theme looks really good on this man. I think I'll keep the dark theme. You also have send user feedback. Now this is something Microsoft does automatically without you even knowing for the most part. But here you, you have a slider where it says you can have basic system information that you're sending, usage statistics, detailed system information and basic usage statistics or detailed usage information. I mean, detailed system information and a lot of usage statistics. Now you also have your most used settings over here, screen locking and energy savings. So if you click on energy saving, oh yeah, first you have to apply. And then, you know, you're basically your basic energy settings, screen saver, suspend session, buttons handling, wireless, basic stuff. Anyway, we're not going to go into all of these options. These are kind of intuitive, even if it is a little bit overwhelming. So let's go into some of these. So workspace behavior. So even under this, you have a ton of effects. You have desktop effects. You have screen edges. So you can, you know, you can have these corners. If your cursor hits any of these places on the screen, you can have some effect. You can have some desired behavior attached to them. You have shortcuts, you have startup and shutdown, you have search. Regional settings is if you're coming from India or America, you would like to have it set to your locale, basically. You also have KD wallet. I've never used it, but a wallet is a wallet. It should be fine. Input devices, display and monitor. Let's click over here. So yeah, basically you have your display monitor. You can change your resolution. You, you have your scale. Refresh rate is 50 hertz. This is a 60 hertz panel, but whatever. Night light, night color, whatever you want to call it. This is basically making the screen more yellow so that bliss blue light enters your eyes. This is easier for a lot of people to work at night. I use it very often myself when I'm writing scripts or working. Here you have Thunderbolt. You have color corrections. Bluetooth, very standard. You have your system information, which we just checked, and software updates. So here you can update manually or update automatically. You can use offline updates. Updating manually, man, such a lifesaver because you can do this at your own leisure time and you just you won't be forced updates down your throat like Microsoft Windows. Even over there, you could defer it. But then some of my friends had problems with deferring updates and even then it was forced on them. So yeah, I don't know. So now that we're done with system settings, let's check out Discover. This is the software center for Fedora. I mean, for KDE spin of Fedora. Now, if you're coming from GNOME, this isn't exactly the same as you might have noticed. And you have your applications over here. And under there, this is categorized. It's a very similar pattern as to your start menu. So. If you can navigate through your start menu, you can navigate through here. You have your games, you have your graphics. Let's click on graphics. You have your Blender, OpenSCAD, Krita, GIMP, Color Paint, Raw Therapy. Basically, most of the free and open source software that you're going to need for you know, your day-to-day -day graphics, graphical purposes or needs. Let's open games. Let's see if we have Steam here. So for once you could for one you could scroll through here but if you don't feel like it you could simply go into here and search for something and as you can see it looked up steam and it's not available here so you could if you're looking for steam you could go to their website or if you or like it's at least intelligent enough to point you towards Lutris which is another utility that you could use you could even use Lutris to play steam games so if you're looking for it and or if you're not looking for it maybe a nudge in the right direction would help you anyways here you have your installed application so if i click 
you have your applications, you have your application add-ons, and you have your plasma add-ons. It's still looking for it. I'm not going to bother about it. You have your settings, so you can include Fedora Flatpak testing, which is, eh, it's, it's kind of like beta version, so no need for that. Missing backends, yeah, because I'm in a virtual machine, probably, and it went away. So, yeah, so you have test updates, update scores, updates, debugs. Don't mess with it. Leave it at default unless you're a developer and you want to test out some beta software. You have updates in here. We're not going to update, but so it's basically a centralized way of updating your entire system, your applications, your flat packs, your snaps, maybe, and your RPMs. So now that we're done with Discover, or, or you could also return home or whatever. So now that we're done with Discover, let's close it. And now we're going to check out some of the default applications that are included in Fedora with the KDE variant. So under administration, we have DNF Dragora for installing and removing software. This is like, I think like Eddy, which is in Pop! OS. Firewall, by default, that's good. We have language configuration for development, Qt5. I mean, if you're a developer and you know what you're going to be doing, you could easily download it, so it doesn't really matter. Those software are going to appear under this category anyways. Education, your mathematics and science. Let's click. Oh yeah, LibreOffice Math, okay. So you have submenus under menus, which is, which is a good way to categorize. For graphics, you are going to Gwen View, which is basically your image viewer, color paint, LibreOffice Draw. One of the things I like about KDE Plasma is basically it shows you what it is. See, like the name Gwen View, it's not very intuitive, but once you see image viewer, like, yeah, that's image viewer. I know what to do. So if you're somebody who's switching from Windows to Linux, this is, this is a very helpful way of getting you started in the right direction. For example, ocular. You don't know what ocular is. I mean, you could guess from the Latin word. It has the ocu, so kind of like I or C. I'm not sure. I'm probably guessing by this point. But this is a document viewer, so it, you know, it's related to C and I's. More applications. You have your color chooser. You have your ruler under internet. Obviously, you have Firefox. You got mail. And yeah, you got you got a ton of other things. I haven't used these, so yeah. Under multimedia, you have Dragon Player, Elisa, and Camoso for a camera. Under Office, you get your basic LibreOffice suite. You get Ocular, which we I think we already got Ocular in another portion. Yeah, and under Graphics. So it overlaps sometimes, but it's not a big deal. So under Settings, you have System Settings. Under System, so you have Dolphin, which is the File Manager console, or console rather, I can't speak. This is your terminal. You can report a problem. You have your system monitor. Let's click on the system monitor and see how it is. Oh yeah, this is this looks pretty. So you so this is your CPU usage, your disk, and your memory usage. What applications are running? Your history. So this will give you a nice graph of your CPU and memory and network usage. Your processes. So you could kill processes from here if you wanted to. Let's go back and quit this application. So you also have utilities like Emoji Selector, Arc, which is an archiving tool. It's pretty self-explanatory because you have these names over here, like I said. So it's really easy. Let's go into Dolphin. This is one of the best file managers on Linux. As you can see, the dark theme looks really great. I love the default look on it. And basically over here, you have your desktop documents, your shortcuts, like you do in Windows File Explorer. You have your devices. This is your additional things. So these are the ones under your home folder or home directory or partition, if you fancy that. And these are your external drives and whatever. So with that, we come to the end of this short and sweet look at Fedora Linux 35 KDE variant. I hope you liked it. and. Stick around for next time. Until then, peace.